Now, gold has been used for a very long time as a currency. People back in the day used to use gold as an exchange for products or services. And we still do that to this day. Now we're actually trading it and using it as a Forex pair. I'm going to show you some of my predictions and what I believe is going to happen. A lot of it has already came true. It's down quite a bit. I'm going to show you levels, which is nothing but supply and demands, why these levels are always respected and why these big banks and institutions trade at these levels and how you can easily identify these levels simply by analyzing gold and USD. So we're going to take a look at it, deep dive into it. I'm telling you, I'm going to make it really simple for you guys. So go ahead and like and subscribe if you're interested in videos like this, if you love our analysis, or if you're just curious about trading in general. So let's go ahead and dive into it again. Don't forget to smash that like button. We really appreciate you guys for it. Let's get it. Yeah, I know I got problems and I don't know where to go. I don't want to put the blame on it. All right, so I'm going to start off on the higher time frame. If you're not starting off on the higher time frame, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You have to understand what the overall picture is so that you know how to trade it. Oftentimes I hear that traders are starting on the lower time frame, like 15 minute. 30 minute, one hour, and they're buying and they're thinking they're finding these levels and those levels are really insignificant. You have to see the bigger picture. I'm going to explain to you why you need to see the bigger picture by simply analyzing gold. So one thing we want to see is where's price at now? Here's price right here, hanging around right here. So what would you typically do here? Some people may look at this and say, hey, I'm going to buy is at a nice level. Let's go ahead and buy. You want to know the exact overall trend. And oftentimes, trends could be reversing. And in order to find if a trend is reversing, you have to figure out if the price is at a supply level or a demand level on the bigger picture, on the higher time frame. So I'm going to look at the weekly time frame, for example. And one thing that stands out to my eye is this peak right here. And if I look left, another peak and another peak. So when were these peaks happening, right? So this last peak just recently happened in May of this year, May of 2023. Prior to that, that happened in March of 2022. And then even before that, this peak was in August of 2020. So we have a couple of strategies in our academy here. One is called the B swing strategy. And that simply means when price hasn't been tested for six months or more, then the probabilities of price reversing from that level is very, very high. Now, the higher or the longer price has been at that level, for example, this one here has been over a year, then we know that the odds of it reversing again will happen. Prior to this one here in August of 2020, price reached here. And then in the future, March of 2022, how many months or how many years was this, right? That was almost two years when price reversed. So the longer the distance from one to the other level, price is going to respect it and head to the downside. Now it's May 2023. Price respected it from before. This is our B-swing strategy. It's going to head to the downside. So I'm going to mark a rectangle right here at this level so that it's easily identifiable. We're going to keep an eye on that, okay? So remember, according to our B-swing strategy, we would have sold when it came around this area here. There's no specific price, but as long as it's within this area, then it would have been a good time to sell. And not just sell, a very long time. So this is what I mean here. I'm going to get my measuring tool Back in August of 2020, from here all the way down to this level here, it dropped $394. That's huge for gold, okay? Now, again, recently in March of 2020, it dropped from here, and it actually dropped further than that. So let me adjust my screen. So from here to here, it dropped over $450 to the downside. And so now we have an opportunity again where price is here. And it only dropped $145. You see this number here, right? That's what I'm reading. Only dropped $145. So the odds of price continuing to drop to the downside, in my professional opinion, is huge. Now, could it not do that and continue higher? Absolutely. But you have to understand supply and demand. These levels don't happen by accident. This huge drop at this level doesn't happen by accident. So we understand that huge banks and institutions, we understand that hedge funds drive the market. So these candles here, this strong push to the downside wasn't from us trading or from you trading just as simple retail traders. These levels are pushed by these huge people who are putting in millions and billions of dollars into the market like our institutions, banks, and hedge funds. So you have to understand if they're in it for a win, if they're in it for profiting as well, we're simply understanding where their levels are and we are simply riding with them. So if we know this level is significant, why not sell? OK, so that's the logic of B swing of our strategy. And on top of that, we have another strategy called the channel strategy. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means here. So let's look in the past here again, back in August of 2020. And I'm going to draw a simple downtrend. OK, so I'm going to do something like this, connecting my high. 
and I'm going to simply drill it out here. And I'm not taking it out to this wick here because this wick didn't last long. So I'm just taking it to around the body. And then I will simply clone it, the same exact parallel line, and take it to the bottom. So the idea of the channel strategy is to buy when price is at support trend line and to sell when it's at resistance trend line. Buy at support trend line, sell at resistance, and so on and so forth. And that's the strategy. But you're not only buying or selling when it gets to that line. We're only using those lines as confluence. The reason why we buy is because they're at minor support and resistance level or minor supply and resistance level. I'm going to explain it to you in just a bit. Let's do the same thing here. Obvious downtrend. We're connecting our high to our low. I'm going to simply clone this here, drag it to the bottom. OK, and again, I'm going to mark my high. We would have sold here, bought here, sold, bought. Very easy strategy, right? Makes sense. So now we have two strategies and one working for us. We have our B swing strategy selling at the very high and holding it. And then while we're doing that, we have other positions going on where we're selling and buying, selling and buying. So let's do that here now in the future. This is where we're currently at. Price rejected here in May. We're going to grab our trend line and I'm not going to drag or prolong my trend line here. I'm not going to draw it all out here with price isn't there yet, but I'm going to simply draw it like this here. OK, and I'm going to take it to this here and we want to kind of mimic this here. OK, so let's do the exact same thing again. We're still on the weekly time frame. We want to see what the overall picture is. So what we're doing now is identifying these minor resistance and support levels here. So this is what I mean here. I'm going to grab my tool here. And we're going to find things that sticks out here. Here's a level that sticks out, a level that sticks out. Very easy to the eye. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool here. And I'm going to drag this all the way across right here. So here to me is a level where price may come down, where price is currently at now. I believe price will eventually come back down here and respond or react. Okay. I'm going to draw this all the way out here and watch this here. If I get my tool, look at this here where price came to this level, shot to the upside. Again, price came to this level right here, shot to the downside. So these are all levels that you want to identify and find here, okay? So let's go ahead and do this here. Let's find this level right here where price reacted very, very abruptly. So I'm gonna get my rectangle tool and simply draw a minor level all the way across, just like this here. All right, so we can see multiple times where candles bounce from below up here from below up here and so on and so forth. And so we can see that price may do the exact same thing if it comes back to down to this level right here. So we wanna find these minor levels here in which we can trade the channel strategy here. Here's another level right here, okay? So we see when price is shot down and again, it came to this resistance trend line or close to it and it shot down. So we don't wanna trade just because it's touching the trend line. We wanna trade because it is at a level and it just so happens to be near the resistance trend line, okay? So that way you don't sell when you don't need to. You don't sell just because it's getting to the trend line, you sell because it's at a level, and then it happens to be near the trend line, that's confluence, that just means confirmation. So we wanna continue to do things like that. I'm gonna get my rectangle tool again, find this level right here where price shot to the upside, and I'm gonna simply drag it all the way across right here. And we can see price reacted here. It didn't quite get to the trend line. And that's why we don't only buy when it gets to the trend line. We only buy when it gets to a level and it's shot up. Again here, buy to this level and it's shot up. So I'm marking these minor levels here that may be interesting to me in the future. So that being said, in my opinion, I believe price will continue to the downside something like this. Now, how far it could come back and retest this level right here, down here at the bottom? It may not. It may come back and retest this level here. It may not. We have no clue quite yet, but I do believe that price was at a good area up here and it's continuing to make lower highs and lower lows. Now, are we officially in a downtrend on the weekly? Absolutely not. So we want to trade cautiously. That being said, we're going to go to the lower time frame. Now let's go to the daily time frame. So in my mind, I have a bias that price may continue to break lower, although it hasn't yet. So how would we trade it? If you're selling and if you believe that the trend is reversing, then you typically want to sell at resistance levels, okay? Because then you're selling at a good price. So let me show you exactly what I mean. We're on the daily time frame. Price has broken down lower and it could continue lower. So if that's the case, you don't want to trade just because it's dropping lower. It is a bad time to trade. You want a pullback up to the upside at a resistance level before you sell. 
So that being said, let me show you exactly what I mean. We see that price has been ranging here. It's been going up, down, up, down, up, down. So it finally broke here. It's retesting this wick in which it could again, but I would sell if price comes back up, at least around this area right here. And we can look left, we see how price is whipped around this area. And if so, we can see how close it is to our trend line, right? And then I can go ahead and grab my rectangle tool and look left for clues. And we can see how this was a rejective area here. And I bet we can find more price action at this area as well, if we continue left, right? And we see multiple wick rejections here. We see a wick rejection here. So that to me is a very interesting price to sell at, right? So you don't wanna sell when price is already headed down. You wanna sell when price goes up. Now you're getting at a discount. The risks are very minimal now because you've already, because price has already shot up. So now there has to be a correction. So. In my opinion, I believe in the long term, price is going to continue to head down just like it did in the past. OK, but you want to sell. You don't want to sell now. You want to sell when price comes and pull back. OK, so that being said, overall, we're in an uptrend. Right. So we're clearly in an uptrend. I'm going to draw my trend line. And you'll see something like this. Absolutely. We're in an uptrend. But to every uptrend there has to be a cancellation of that trend, okay? We're clearly an uptrend here, and I believe price may do something like this and break out, just like it did before. Here's my trend line here, okay? We were in an uptrend here, and then eventually it canceled and broke to the downside. Again, we were in an uptrend right here, and then price went ahead, canceled to the downside. So I think we're gonna see something like that you want to look at the higher time frame to spot these levels. Now, if you're looking to identify a good price, then you would go ahead as you start from the top, go to the lower time frame. So let's go to the hourly time frame and see exactly what is going on here. All right. So we're on hourly time frame. We know that we want price to head up a bit, right? So we see this strong push to the downside. As I scroll out a bit, we're going to see, okay, where can price eventually stop, right? We see the strong push to the downside right here. It eventually stopped at this level right here. Here's a minor level as it respecting, as it has respected. And I believe price may come back and eventually draw back up here, all right, within the next few hours, maybe the next day or so. But you want to wait for price to shoot up close to your trend line, at least around this area here. And so as I go to the higher time frame, you can see what I mean, This that this is pretty close to the trend line. And as it gets close to the trend line, then you want to go ahead and sell. So we're using our price action channel strategy coupled with our B-swing strategy. And then we can even uh, throw in some indicators for the KISS strategy that we use as well. So guys, let me know in the comments, is this something that you can appreciate, something that you believe in as well, that you think that gold is going to continue to sell off? Now, I do want to let you know, you want us to continue to see lower highs and lower lows before you just go ahead and sell. You want to see wick rejection, meaning that you want to see that sellers are starting to pick up and buyers are starting to lose steam. You want to continue to see that pattern. And as you see that pattern, you will have more confidence in your sale and in your analysis as you mark up your charts. OK, so, guys, let me know again in the comments if that's something you agree with. Uh, let me know if you even trade gold. I know some people trade gold, some people don't. And in my opinion, guys, we're headed in a downtrend, but it may take some time to do that. And as we scroll back out and look at our chart again, we do want to see how long it took for price to shoot to the downside. And sometimes I'll do that. I'll get my measuring tool. So from here down to here, and I'll look at this status here. It took about 49 days for price to move $139. Uh, now, if I do that again from the past, so if the last time I was here in March 2022, then I can go ahead and say, hey, again, it was about 49 days and it pushed about 148 pips to the downside. So it was pretty much mimicking what happened in the past. But we see last time it happened, it did actually push to the downside pretty far. The very first time it did, it pushed pretty far, but not as far as it did the second time. So I believe price may continue this trend line. It may continue this momentum for a while. We just don't know exactly where it may stop. It could stop at this level here. It can continue further, stop at this level here, or even further and stop at this level here. So guys, keep an eye on this trade here. Let's trade it together. Let me know your thoughts. I will see you in the next video. God bless.